My name is Tom Dolly, an interventional cardiologist at CentraCare Heart and Vascular Center in Minnesota. I'd like to present this case with a 42-year-old male with prior history of coronary artery disease and a previous non-ST elevation MI with revascularization to his LAD in 2007, as well as a past medical history of tobacco use, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and obesity. He presented to the emergency room with new onset chest pain occurring at rest and was admitted to the hospital where he ruled in for a non-ST elevation MI with a positive troponin, initially measured at 1.6 on admission. I performed coronary angiography, and in our first view here, which is an RAO caudal angulation, you see mild diffuse disease of the left main, and the LAD with no significant stenosis, and most notably is the absence of a left circumflex in this view. When you see a long left main, often this is indicative of an anomalous takeoff of your left circumflex system arising from either the left or right coronary cusp. Next, I perform selective angiography of the right coronary artery, which demonstrates mild to moderate disease of the proximal and mid RCA in a ruptured plaque with severe stenosis and associated thrombus in the distal RCA. I did not appreciate uh, anomalous left circumflex arising from the right coronary cusp with a standard injection via JR4 diagnostic catheter and often these vessels have an inferior takeoff and therefore I elected to perform injection with a multi-purpose catheter successfully now visualizing the anomalous takeoff of the circumflex from the right coronary cusp as you see here in this view. Selective angiography of this vessel now demonstrates moderate indeterminate narrowing at its osteum and moderate to severe focal stenosis in its mid portion as it traverses the AV groove. Distally, you can see it give rise to a first obtuse marginal as well as a distal circumflex which is occluded and likely chronically. I therefore proceeded with percutaneous revascularization of our culprit distal right coronary artery lesion with placement of a single 4.0 bare metal stent. Achieving a nice result as shown here. My question for you is how would you address the moderate to severe lesion of the anomalous left circumflex and indeterminate lesion of its proximal anomalous origin? Our options would be to stent the anomalous circumflex, treat it medically, use a pressure wire to assess its hemodynamic significance, or perform follow up stress imaging after the patient has recovered from his acute coronary syndrome. I think again we'd all agree that uh, stenting would not be indicated of the anomalous circumflex in the absence of ongoing cardiogenic shock, chest pain, or ongoing EKG changes. I elected to perform fractional flow reserve testing uh, of the proximal and mid circumflex lesions with a pressure wire and using IV adenosine. As you can see here, the FFR was measured at 0 0.99, demonstrating these lesions not to be hemodynamically significant. In conclusion, this case uh, demonstrates that a pressure wire testing of a non-culprit lesion during acute coronary syndrome can be a safe and useful tool to determine if additional non-culprit lesions are hemodynamically significant, which may help you guide further management and care of the patient. Thank you.